Choice by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Liz Trollinger, June 21st, 2016, Vienna, Virginia. Choice The eyes of one shall open on the morn, where sunrise fires stain white peaks afar, another in the valley where no star breaks on the gloom of sea and midnight born. And where the poppies riot through the corn, the one unshod may pass with wound nor scar, the other's struggling hands no gates unbar, thus one shall have the rose and one the thorn. If I could choose and could not be denied, thy way would lie in many a sunny field, while through the night my thorny path would be, forever in the dark would I abide, and I would be thy solace and thy shield, if I could choose if I could choose for thee. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Confession by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org, by Liz Trollinger, Vienna, Virginia. Confession. Dear, wouldst thou have me say how much I care? and send the scarlet flood into my cheek? Shall I forget my womanhood and speak? Before thee must my inmost self lie bare? I have no thought I would not have thee share, and yet my faltering words must prove too weak. If I would give the knowledge thou dost seek of love that is not passion but a prayer, ah, Chide me not, heart's dearest, let me feel, Down deep within my soul the steadfast trust, That only those who truly love may know. Forgive me if my lips may not reveal The crimson roses hidden in my dust. I cannot speak because I love thee so. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love's Blindness by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sandra Schmidt Love's Blindness No fault in me? And wouldst thou have me take my lover's tender words and deem them true? What if my sight should find perfection too, and thus another grievous error make? I would the dream were real, for thy dear sake since with a greater gladness thou couldst woo, were I a goddess, not a woman who must fear and tremble, lest thou shouldst awake. No fault in me, dear heart, it is thy love that with transfiguring mist has veiled thine eyes, to make thy vision of me always kind. And so I pray, to him enthroned above, that to thy height of beauty I may rise, or else, God keep thee still divinely blind. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Storm by Myrtle Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Jesse Florio. The Storm. Wild winds that grow to fury scourge and lash The threatening sea that echoes back their cries. Before the storm a single seagull flies, While whitening breaker legions meet and crash, The wind and tide in deadly battle clash, Where tattered surges in swift anger rise To thunder back the challenge that defies the darkened sky torn by the lightning's flash. I fear no storm within thy sheltering arm, nor yet the thronging thunders, nor the dark, nor booming breakers through the midnight hurled. Thou art my captain, shielding me from harm, and through the tempests thou wilt guide my bark past all the rocks and dangers of the world. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
The North Star by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Liz Trollinger, Vienna, Virginia. The North Star In realms of night, ere dawn and day began, Amid the vaulted dark this star was set, And shining with unchanging splendor yet, It guides the faltering steps of wayworn man, Adrift at sea, the troubled pilot scan the stormy heavens and frowning clouds that let no single gleam of white or violet upon the zenith's dark and threatening span. And even as the storm-tossed sailor lifts bewildered eyes to midnight's hollow sphere and guides his course by steady lights above, so through the darkness broken into rifts, I never yet have failed to find thee, dear, nor have I lost the compass of thy love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Old Love Song by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Liz Trollinger June twenty seventh, Vienna, Virginia an old love song as if upon my heart strings softly played by angel hands that touch the chords unseen through all the dead sweet years that lie between there comes the music of a serenade of olden dreams the melody is made of violets that bloom amid the green and like a benediction calm serene a gentle peace upon my soul is laid and yet, forgive me if the hot tears start, when at the end the deep chords seem to pause, and great arpeggios swell out clear and strong. For thou hast kept the sun within my heart, and I must weep for very joy because our years of love are mingled with the song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Water of Forgetfulness by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org, by Liz Trollinger, Vienna, Virginia. The Water of Forgetfulness By Stygian shores a sunless river flows through barren fields and desert wastes of sand, and on its marge strange, ghostly travelers stand to touch the somber flood and find repose one draught of lethe and there comes to those who journey to that undiscovered strand a peace unknown upon this troubled land which slowly into marble calmness grows some day i too from thy dear arms withdrawn on that last voyage sped by prayer and dirge shall stand with those who wait beside the stream but though beyond me lies a mortal dawn i take no cup of peace from that grim surge if thus my heart shall lose its earthly dream end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sunset on the Shore by Myrtle Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Marianne Spiegel. The last white banners of the fleeting day had trailed along the summit of the hill, and, as a maid to lover's kiss a thrill, a crimson flush upon the waters lay. Soft, tangled lights shone through the irised spray that gleamed afar with alien splendor till the thronging seabirds' plaintive notes were still, and sunset changed to shadow, then to grey. But out across the sea that moved so slow, as half asleep and dreaming of the clime where yesterday these tides had laved the shore, there stole the tender light of afterglow, like love that lingers for a little time, and leaves remembered sweetness evermore. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Violets by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Marianne. I hold thy violets against my face, and deeply breathe the haunting, purple scent that fills my wearied heart with sweet content, and lays upon my soul a chrismal grace. The air around me for a little space is heavy with the fragrance they have lent, and every passing wind that heavenward went has held thy blossoms in a close embrace. I think I love the violets best of all because of that hushed sweetness, far and faint as stardust through the darkness dimly sown. Forever do they hold my sense in thrall. My spirit kneels as to some imaged saint, for they and thou were made to be my own. And of poem, this recording is in the public domain. Roses by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Liz Trollinger, July 6, Vienna, Virginia. Roses, deep dews of June upon thy roses lay, of April rains and summer sweetness wrought and chaliced in the blossoms thou hast brought to give me pleasure for a fleeting day love's dearest sweetest messengers are they for like a bee in satin petals caught may hide an unsuspected tender thought that every opening flower must betray and haply if sometimes i find surcease of tears and sorrow in a lover's gift that with its clustered bloom my breast adorns it is because thy love has brought me peace, and made through cloud and storm a starry rift, because with roses thou hast hid my thorns. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Where Sea and River Meet by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org, by Liz Trollinger, Vienna, Virginia. Where sea and river meet. The tide goes out, and in its peace serene, the river dreams all through the afternoon, or, turning drowsily, begins to croon a lullaby along its banks of green. And then, through rising mist but dimly seen, there gleams a silvered star and crescent moon the great deep faintly chanting prayer and rune across the stretch of sand that lies between the tide comes in and with a passioned flow the river's heart goes out to find the sea its utmost waters moving toward the sun and so together life and love must go where sea and river meet thy love for me and mine for thee must rise and be as one. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dream River by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org By Liz Trollinger July 6, Vienna, Virginia Dream River Along the fields of sleep the river strays, Where in the sun the golden water glows, As with a drowsy melody it flows Through woodland aisles and scented forest ways, And like the dew a summer morning lays Upon the petals of an opening rose, The mist-veiled eyes of tired dreamers close, With soft enchantment resting on their gaze. Amid the clover where the wild bees hum, And passing silver sunbeams gently sift Their garnered treasure into meadow grass, I wait, my dearest, till God lets thee come, Until a down-dream river we may drift, And gather slumber lilies as we pass. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Outward Bound by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Marianne When on the unknown deep there comes a sail 
outlined in shadow on the darkened sea, when far beyond the captain calls to me, and I alone can hear his searching hail. Why should I fear to pass beyond the pale and say a long farewell to love and thee, when, set on whitening lips so tenderly, thy lover's kiss no longer may avail? When all is done, I have no fear nor dread. So when the captain calls me, speak me fair and hold my hand a moment in thine own. For I shall love thee still, though I were dead, and past the waste of waters find thee there. Sweetheart, I know I cannot die alone. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Waiting by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Marianne. Sometimes, when sunset skies are overcast, and I have lived my day as best I know, I fall to dreaming, and remember so the golden hours that shimmered as they passed. Sometimes, when tired eyes are filling fast, I hear thy footfalls near me, hushed and slow, I feel thy kiss upon my hand, and grow toward the calm of perfect peace at last. Sometimes my lonely soul cries out for thee, my hungry heart pleads for thee, deep within, then once again I hear thy dear voice call. Ah, sweetheart, say that in eternity God gives us back these long-lost years, and in a blinding instant we shall find them all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Tide by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org By Liz Trollinger June twenty seventh, Vienna, Virginia The Tide Far out at sea the whitening waves grow dim, And in a filmy cloud the veiled stars hide. The wind has risen on the waters wide, And brought the breakers to the very brim. But yonder, by the dark cloud's shining rim, She moves in beauty, and the restless tide Will pulse around the earth as she may guide And chant the stately measures of a hymn. But ere her gentle radiance shall fade, the stormy passion surge will wait at flood, its longing music hushed to softest croon. And like the tide thy wish have I obeyed, with answer in my heart and in my blood, I love thee as the sea hath loved the moon. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Your Roses by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross. Your roses die, the fallen petals blow across my room with every wandering breeze that stirs the drooping boughs of yonder trees and makes faint music on the shore below. So still it is, a rose itself might go, star like amid the night's dim mysteries, and keeping shadowy tryst with one of these breed crimson fragrance to a rose of snow your roses die the petals fade and fall the late moon lies upon bare hearts of gold and even these to-morrow will be gone but yet to-morrow when my heart shall call how yours will leap to answer as of old your roses die but oh your love lives on and the poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love's Afternoon by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross The sunset radiance on far heights has lain, And in hushed murmur flows the singing stream, Amid the maples autumn splendors gleam, and shadows slowly creep upon the plain. Soft purple dusk lies on the fields of grain, 
and whispered notes of drowsy robins seem like distant echoes from the hills of dream or like the cadence of an april rain if love like dawn and morning fades away if only once there comes this thing sublime if love's sweet year holds but a single june i will not ask from god another day nor plead for spring again at harvest time but walk toward night with thee a true afternoon end of poem this recording is in the public domain Starbreak by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross. As if by magic, sunset gates unbar, and through the portals day goes home to rest. The crimson clouds, massed in the golden west, foundations of celestial cities are. The flaming beacons shed their light afar, till twilight comes upon the mountain crest gray shadows deepen on night's quiet breast that bears the jewel of a single star then out upon the meadows strangely white where like a ghostly veil lies autumn mist the thousand lights of heaven softly shine like this thy love has risen on my night thy arms around me keep a lover's tryst star break and thee and thy lips close on mine end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Pat by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross We know not where our hidden way may lie, What stress and storm the coming years may hold. The midday heats and midnights drear and cold May meet us on our journey far or nigh, yet step by step we go till by and by the mystic tapestries of fate unfold when weary past believing gray and old we reach the end together thou and i on eyes grown dim the mists of blindness creep the pulse moves slower still and sorrows fade but even then we may not understand yet god still give it his beloved sleep o oh, heart of mine why should we be afraid if only night may find us hand in hand end of poem this recording is in the public domain the love light by myrtle reed read for librivox dot org by liz trollinger vienna virginia the love light strong surges of the world around thee roll and high thy pulses burn at fever heat amid the thousands in the city street whose eyes are strained to see a distant goal the human tide moves far past thy control and weary grow thy hastening eager feet when heavy-eyed despair has come to beat with sickening terrors on thy tired soul my soldier, no, I will not have thee fail. What though untoward fate against thee seems, and far afield has ever made thee roam, thy steadfast courage must at last prevail, and through the lattice lights my candle gleams, to lead thee safely back to love and home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The House of Pain by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross Pain rears her castles where the mighty dwell, And side by side with them the humblest kneel, The trembling hands that grope in darkness feel, Unyielding walls around their prison cell, She sits amid her rue and asphodel, With sorrow on her distaff, and her reel forever toiling at her loom and wheel with warp and woof she weaves her grievous spell and yet a captive in torn garments clad who with uplifted face goes singing by hath sometimes changed a bitter loss to gain 
For God hath strangely mingled sweet with sad, And in the thorns a hidden rose may lie, Since love lives ever in the house of pain. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Forgiveness by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross Dear, why shouldst thou for my forgiveness plead And take the blame in nightly lover's way When thou must know I could not tell thee nay Since my unfailing pardon is thy meed Of my mistakes thou hast not taken heed But yet I fear thy clearer vision may Discern behind thy dream my faulty clay, Then of thy grace shall I have greater need. Forgive thee, dearest, it were passing strange, To grant thee pardon for a single fault, When all of mine must bounce with thy one. I have thy love, beyond the reach of change, Which all my erring future must exalt, and I forgive thee all thou hast not done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Violin by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross Dark night and storm and passioned breakers din The seabird's note, the vastness of the tide and softest winds that true the forest side are with this fibre strangely woven in the organ tones of surge and sea begin within this mystic temple sanctified by all the vanished years that ere they died had hid their sweetness in a violin some day the buried music shall be found when master hands awake the sleeping voice to some great song that in crescendo rings, and thus, as silence changed the rapturous sound, my wakened heart must evermore rejoice, because thy fingers touched the hidden strings. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Weaving by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross. A somber web is laid upon my loom, Where, for a little space, my hands must weave Whatever pattern passing fate may leave Upon the threshold of my darkened room. No roses neat my trembling fingers bloom, Loose threads and errors I cannot retrieve, And ever with a sore despair I grieve, for stars have never broken on my gloom. When, at the last, my tears have ceased to flow, When life tides wait forever at the ebb, And master hands my tapestries unroll, From pleading lips the cry will come, I know. Dear God, forgive, in that uneven web, There lies enmeshed a loving woman's soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Twilight by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross When twilight creeps upon thy life and mine And on the margin of the sea we stand Will some forgotten light gleam on the sand Or some lost star in shadow faintly shine Shall we find friendly beacons or a sign To lead us safely to the unknown land? That lies in far off beauty when my hand slips softly for the last time into time, when twilight falls and hidden in our dust, no rose of youth our dimming eyes discern, when darkness comes upon us from above, shall we still have unstained our lifelong trust, dear God, thy utmost lessons we will learn, and not complain if we may keep our love. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Last Journey 
by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross. Some day the winding path that we have trod, its changing purpose ever unrevealed, will lead us safely to a sunny field where white and crimson clover breaks the sod some day when we have passed beneath the rod our harvest at the best a barren yield the heartaches and the pain shall all be healed by that white peace which is the gift of god and yet a little longer i would wait the while thy sands of life still slowly run until for thee the sunny fields unbar yes i will stand beside the meadow gate till thy last journey too is almost done and on the clover faintly gleams a star end of poem this recording is in the public domain night by myrtle reed read for librivox dot org by sky albatross a down the lane comes flocks of weary sheep with muffled tinklings to the waiting fold dim grayness lies upon the sun's last gold and timid stars into the shadow creep a gracious darkness on the rocky steep has fallen where the drowsy sheep bells tolled and far afield the drooping poppies hold within their dusky petals softest sleep twilight and hush and then the mystic hours when dian moves along her starry ways from day-long bondage of the sun set free my soul has opened as night blooming flowers that fear the heat and splendor of the days ah love it is night and i am waiting thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain. A Lost April by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Sky Albatross Is this September? In a golden light the sudden rain has passed, and sparkling dew is dripping from the trees. Each drop pierced through with quivering sun treads shining silver white the thrush's note ascends in rapturous flight and every meadow lark that upward flew from clover fields at dawn is singing too as if there were no autumn and no night is this september nay for on the earth in radiant beauty april treads again and woos the robins with her smiles and tears and so if dead spring has another birth we have not lost our love's first sweetness then it waits somewhere adown the aisle of years end of poem this recording is in the public domain a robin in the rain by myrtle reed read for librivox dot org by liz trollinger Vienna, Virginia. A Robin in the Rain. The springtime rains have beaten on the trees and taken fragrant tribute from them all. Crushed apple blossoms lie upon the wall, forsaken by the faithless honey bees. The saddest of the vernal days are these, with every passing wind wet petals fall. The birds forget their tender mating call and sing no more their joyous melodies nay listen like the voice of silvered flute in brave sweet cadence ever rippling on a hidden robin pipes his cheery strain ah love thy lips and mine are sadly mute when for the moment sun and hope are gone we have not faith to sing amid the rain end of poem this recording is in the public domain Devotion by Myrtle Reed, read for LibriVox.org by Marianne. After Schumann Though I were blind, thy face I still should see, as last upon thine eyes the love-light lay. 
If trembling lips were mute that fain would pray, Though I were dumb, my heart would speak to thee. If snow and flame should seem alike to me, Thy touch would wake its answer in my clay. Though bound in silence, I should hear thee say, I love thee, sweet, for all eternity. Thou art the star within my world of night. Thou art the music I have longed to hear. Thou art my loving speech that softly stole upon my lips as dawn upon the sight. Thou art my tenderness, my roses, dear. I am a woman, and thou art my soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Tokens by Myrtle Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Marianne. I crush the faded roses into dust, then cast their fragrant ashes on the air. A gift to secret winds that waft them where no eyes may mark fulfillment of the trust. I hold the violence a moment, just, to live once more the hour when they were fair. The yellowed letters lie beside them there, so sweet I cannot burn them, as I must. Yet, after all, I count the tokens not, since in thy heart the roses grew for me, and every violet brings me the whole of thy great tenderness and loving thought. Like some illumined missal, Words from thee are lettered on the pages of my soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Old Garden by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org By Liz Trollinger Vienna, Virginia An Old Garden Along the wall the lengthening shadows creep, and questing honeybees have homeward flown, over meadow grass and weeds now overgrown, upon the crimson clover lying deep. Strange sentinels the lark spurs watches keep, and drowsily the thistle down is blown, white morning glories. Vagrant blooms have sown where that forgotten garden lies asleep. Far down the path, beside the broken gate, in seeming portent stands a cypress tree, and, royal, lonely, like a thing apart, a single golden rose has challenged fate. Thus, at the last may it be given me to sleep with thy dead roses on my heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lavender by Myrtle Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Marianne. The memory of old gardens gently clings around these broken flowers, now gray and dead while childish dreams and visions long since fled come back once more on swift and kindly wings. Again the meadow lark at sunrise sings, and fairy webs all through the woodland spread, with drops of crystal strong on every thread, bring back the sweetness of forgotten springs. The lavender is dead, yet tis not death, for stores of snowy linen finely spun shall hold its subtle fragrance through the year. And so, as linen scented by its breath, in all my life must be a little sun, because I know that thou hast loved me, dear. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Harvest by Myrtle Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Marianne. The slanting beams of afternoon have traced, where slender shafts of ripening grain unfold, a mystic pattern wrought of palest gold, with blood-red poppies closely interlaced. 
and so the distant harvest fields are graced with drifted blooms that wander uncontrolled and when night's dusky fabrics are unrolled in every chaliced cup a pearl is placed so when my doubtful harvest shall begin with such small store of grain as chaff can yield and i have naught to give that may atone i know the reaper searching far within will grant me pardon for my barren field because thy poppies in my wheat have grown end of poem this recording is in the public domain the vineyard by myrtle reed read for librivox.org by liz trollinger vienna virginia the vineyard upon the hill beyond the grove of pine all through the vineyard tiny tendrils run where marked with fleeting shadow and with sun the shimmering leaves and fragrant creepers twine september here has made her sparkling wine and in the silences of night begun the fairy spinners mystic lace have spun around the clustered purple of the vine so through the world's vast vineyard thou and i are pledged to travel onward side by side and walk upon the way that he has willed though saddest failure in our cups may lie when we have trod the grapes he will not chide because with love our wine has been distilled end of poem this recording is in the public domain indian summer by myrtle reed read for LibriVox.org by anusha ayer a purple haze lies on the distant hill and fallow fields an alien beauty wear there seems mysterious promise in the air which passing summer lingers to fulfil the silvery music of the tinkling rill has died away as if in silent prayer the winds have left the murmuring maples bare and all the woodland ways are strangely still december waits with winding sheets of snow and that fair field a thrill to autumn's kiss a sleeper in an unmarked grave shall be they say love hath its seasons even so the winter in my heart must be like this because through summer i have walked with thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain crowned by myrtle reed Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. I hear no coronation hymns ascend where loyal peoples marble arches raise. Within no palace halls I pass my days, before my throne no lords and ladies bend. No trumpet tongued salutes my paths attend, nor cries of silver bugles sound my praise. For me no fires of splendid triumph blaze. I have no mighty kingdom to defend. Yet I am royal, for thy lips have said, My queen, I love thee even more than life, And my believing heart to thee I bring. So hast thou placed a crown upon my head, And brought me purple with the name of wife, Because thou art my lover and my king. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Last Time by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer Some day the slanting sunbeams on the floor To one of us will give no kindly light For all the world will change to darkest night The hour the reaper pauses at our door Some day a heart that hungers, stabbed and sore Will strive to bear its bitter cross aright with hands that falter and with dimming sight, the one will seek the other evermore. So let each word be tender, and the touch so gentle grow each day more gentle still, for love's dear day will vanish all too fast, and at the end, since we have loved so much, a lingering peace the sore heart may distill, remembering the kiss that was the last.
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Aftermath by Myrtle Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. The reapers sing amid the ripened grain, while in the autumn sun the sickles gleam, and far afield the silken poppies seem to spread their splendid scarlet all in vain. The harvest moon swings slowly up again, in majesty resplendent and supreme. Then like the far faint darkness of a dream, a purple twilight comes upon the plain. Down in the stubble silvery cobwebs shine, as if in answer to September's kiss. A strange and ghostly beauty earth should yield, and if death should divide thy love from mine, Upon my life would come a peace like this, the memory of the harvest on the field. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Absence by Myrtle Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. Thou art so far away, I cannot claim the incense of thy love before my shrine nor thrill in answer to a touch of thine nor hear thy voice make music of my name my tenderness for thee i may not frame since words are weak to show this heart of mine and being woman i must make no sign lest change should come and flood my soul with shame sometime some day if god's great purpose is to give us heaven while we linger here thy lost beloved face mine eyes shall see yet if that deep desire be not his across the thousand leagues i love thee dear and still before us waits eternity end of poem this recording is in the public domain winter by myrtle reed Read for LibriVox.org by Liz Trollinger, Vienna, Virginia. Winter Upon my casement wintry winds may blow, From barren wastes and uplands bleak and chill, While cold and bare above the distant hill The last light lies upon a crown of snow. Athwart the shivering pines the sleet may go, The storm king's dreaded vengeance to fulfill, where icy streams are waiting, deathly still, their gentle music hushed in fear and woe. And yet I have no winter, since thy hand has led me where eternal beauty lies. I have no night save lingering afternoon. We walk together in the summer land, for earth has some way changed to paradise. Ah, heart of mine, with thee it is always June. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Old Letters by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer I read the yellowed pages over and over By breath of long-dead roses faintly stirred And as by magic every written word Flames sweet and strong with love and life once more for here thy heart hath laid its tender store and here my waiting soul hath dimly heard the fluted song of some forgotten bird since memory's angel paused within my door what though thy grass-grown grave shall come between what though the reaches of eternity shall keep thy lips from mine through slow-shod years we learned together all that love may mean there is no need of speech twixt thee and me. And yet, sweetheart, thy kiss, and then my tears. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Death and Love by Myrtle Reed. Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer. The one is racked with grief and bent with age. And on his world-scarred face there comes no gleam, Nor human touch that haply may redeem The common ending of our pilgrimage. The other's childish laughter flouts the sage, 
bids him forget his wisdom, makes him dream. And as by magic, with his touch supreme, he turns to gold the humblest heritage. These two are friends, for on the self-same road they fare together, with hand clasping hand, where asphodel and roses break the sod. It is love who shares with death his heavy load. It is death who close by careless love doth stand. And, side by side, they point the way to God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Afterward by Myrtle Reed Read for LibriVox.org by Anusha Ayer When death's white poppies rest upon my eyes As if my last rebellion he forgave When through the transept and the vaulted nave The solemn measures of my requiem rise Think not that in the dust before thee lies Thy heart of hearts Beyond thy strength to save from secret hiding in a distant grave for thou hast still the love that never dies so kneel beside me dearest with thy palm laid on my face in that old tenderness too great for words since there is no regret twixt thee and me and when the chanted psalm has softly changed to prayer and holiness think not o soul of mine that i forget End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Sonnets to a Lover by Myrtle Reed.